Oh, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the way of the righteous. And today um, I want to come with a message. Um, first, I want to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to be with me as I pour out your word for healing and deliverance for, for those who hear your word. Let their heart be, hearts be open. Let their ears hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. In Jesus' mighty name. There's been a lot going on in social media right now. Uh, a lot of focus has been on Derek Jackson and his wife's situation. And I'm not one... <laughs> I don't, I'm really not here to tear them down, build her up, none of that. I just want to speak truth. I think when we can all get to the truth of things, then we all can heal. Um, it can be our testimony or it could be uh, a story that helps all of us continue to uh, perpetuate the same ungodly behaviors or the same uh, brokenness, brokenness. We can heal um, from it. We can learn from this. The reason why this uh, situation is so, uh, I'm looking for the words because I, I can feel uh, so much of it. How why I'm, I feel like I'm so connected to it because I was his wife. <laughs> I was his wife in different ways and in, in different degrees. Um, but the end result <laughs> was the same. So I want to start with John 17, 3 and 2. It says, For you granted him authority over all people so that he may give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now, this is eternal life, <laughs> that they may know God, the one true God. They may know the one true God in Jesus Christ, the one he has sent. The reason the scripture comes to mind is because in listening to uh, a lot of people's uh, criticism and coverage of Derek Jackson and his wife's situation, it's almost like we consciously or unconsciously discredit the power of God um, in a person's life. I heard things like, you know, they got a nerve to put God on it. This ain't got nothing to do with God. Oh, it does have everything to do with God. It has, it has something to do with the with how you can yield yourself or not yield yourself to Him. And these are the situations we find ourselves in when we try to uh, fill voids with women and money and ego. This is where we find ourselves. And then when we, on the opposite side, try to fill voids with this false love and this false hope in another person that's where we find ourselves in these desperate vulnerable situations uh you know one has pride and one has uh insecurities vulnerabilities and i'm not speaking of again i'm not speaking on Derek Jackson and his wife in particular, but I'm saying this is the toxicity that we find ourselves in when we have not completely yielded ourselves to the power of God. So, now, on the other side, I, you know, if you can listen to the Christians explain everything, and then we can listen to the world explain everything, and this looks really bad really bad <laughs> when I hear the people of the world mock again what God can do in a person's life 
uh, because there's so much rhetoric, there's so many words that we use uh, or misuse to sugarcoat what we're going through or what God can do again. So for instance, we, when we hear this scripture and it says, you know, now this is eternal life that you may know God, the one true God and Jesus, the one he sent him. So we talk about, well, I, you know, I love God and I love Jesus and all I need is Jesus. But what does that mean? What does it look like? Because it's so easy to say words. And just like in the beginning of first Corinthians says, you can speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love. It's loud sounding brass, right? So even here, we can, we see the example here where you can speak eloquently, you can preach, you can do all of these things and still not have love. He said that you can have faith that can move mountains and still not have love. So what is he really saying? He's saying that you could have all, you could do all of these things and still not have God, not have God. So Eternal life is what Jesus died on the cross to give us for, so that we can know the Father in him. If God is love, then this means that we will know patience. We will know kindness. Um, we will know that love does not envy. It does not boast. It does not, it's not proud. <laughs> It's not rude and it's not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not pleasure in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. It believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Because love never fails. Jesus. Is the peace of God. He's the way, the truth, and the life, right? So if we know him, then we know truth. And, and some of us are, are, are learning, and we're learning, right? And we're going to get to that in a minute. But if we know him, then we know truth. And the truth is that there are people out here that we call agents of Satan, who are out here and they have an invested interest in you being kind <laughs> and you being nice and you being so easily forgiving and, and open to them coming into your life, right? But I want to share the scripture with you because again, when I was at that point in my life, Nobody told me the truth because when you go to ministry and I'm not blaming it on all ministry, because again, we need to understand how to rightfully divide the word of truth. And so a lot of people will just put a stamp on it. Kind of like when you go to the doctor's office and you give them the symptoms of what you're going on. Well, I'm sneezing, I'm coughing and, uh, <laughs> you know, I have a fever. Oh, you must have a cold, right? And oftentimes we go to the ministry and say, listen, I, my house is broken. My husband left me and this and this. Oh, well, we just need to pray for reconciliation. And they may not go any deeper than that to find out what's really behind it. What's the root cause of this whole situation, right? And in my situation, it, it was the same. It was the same. And I found myself with that same look, that same disper, dis, disposition, and that same sense of desperation to get back what I thought was mine, right? <laughs> because I wanted that everlasting life. I didn't even know that the uh, e eternal life was to know the Father and the Son. I thought it was to be happy here on earth. Now that's a that's a that is a byproduct <laughs> of knowing the Father and knowing the Son, but it is not it. Because if we don't know God from the beginning, if we don't know love, then how can you give it? Where is it coming from? 
again, this reminds me of the, the woman at the well who again and again and again was married to this person and that person. And she was looking for love in all the wrong places, right? And Jesus tells her there's going to be a time where you'll be able to worship in spirit and in truth. You'll be able to experience what is going on in your spirit and walk in this truth of what that is, right? Because his spirit will dwell in you. And this is what I see in many cases when it comes to narcissistic abuse, when it comes to those who, who feel that they want to love and pour in to, these, uh, to the emptiness of narcissism, is that it is the empty well that it, it, it will run dry. It's, it can never be full, right? Jesus said, I will give you a drink that you will never, ever have to, you will never be thirsty again. You'll never be thirsty again. And for most of it, oh, that's that Christianese stuff or whatever. No, I'm talking about a spirit that dwells inside of you. That's peace and joy in the Holy Ghost as you are in him, remaining in love. Nobody can give that to you. Now you can be with someone who reflects that in you and then you reflect that onto them, but nobody can give it to you mm. in Jesus name, in Jesus name. So I wanted to read something from, this is a book that I wrote. I know it's probably flipped in the screen, but it's called Living in Crazy Peace, the Stepping Stones to Emotional Healing and Wholeness, which was my journey back from narcissistic abuse. Um, and, you know, even, you know, sometimes it's hard to say because a lot of people believe that if you have been in relationships like that, you must have been the most insecure, weak woman ever. And I'm here to tell you that that is not true. I just didn't know. Most of us have, most of us who, uh, I would say, no, the normal people love and can receive love, right? Normal people, when someone says, I forgive you, or when you say, I forgive you, you mean it. When you say, I love you, you mean it. But there are people out here who don't. And sometimes that's hard to grasp if you've been surrounded by that all of your life, such as I have. Most of my life, I believe that there was this type of love, especially if you called yourself a Christian, right? Until I came across this, this, uh, this passage. Um, I'm going to read it from the book because it's going to start from my story. It says, this is a story about how peace saved me. Not the peace you experience sitting by a lake or lying at the beach. I'm talking about crazy peace. It's crazy because it's unexplainable. In fact, it's beyond understanding. What I can say is, once I obtained it, I had within me the power to overcome the trials of life, heal soul wounds, and walk away in perfect peace. Living in the era of the rise of the narcissistic and Jezebelic spirit is not easy, but a peace as peace seekers, we shouldn't be surprised or affected by it. Why? Because we have been forewarned. The Bible is clear that in the end, there would be perilous times. Men would be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient um, to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, tra uh, traitors, headstrong, hardy, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. And this is what I never ever caught before. 
and it's it should be a line meaning all of these people because we can have some people struggle with with a lot of these i know i've i've found myself in some of these sometimes too i'm not saying i stayed there but i'm saying i have been confronted with these and i know people who are who are good people who still struggle here but here's the key he says that these people in this group have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof that's the key now if we go if we go on from there let me get my bible <clears throat> it says i have a form the next sentence once again because i had a lot of people try to convince me to pray he that this would change that god was going to turn it around and i'm not denying the power of god doing so but he needs a yielded vessel and we cannot nor would god ever go against a person's will right so he's saying that the people in this group <laughs> he says have nothing to do with such people why because they are the kinds who worm their ways into homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sin and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. And then he goes down here. He, say, he says, uh, he, he even calls them out as teachers. He gives two examples of teachers. Okay, teachers who ha have been doing this. He says, they are men of depraved minds who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected. But they will not get very far because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. Now, once again, because I know the struggle from the inside, it's one thing to look at a person and say, oh, I can't believe that they tolerate this and they're doing this or um, that tolerating the disrespect and the, the abuse. But as you're going through it, sometimes you don't see it as abuse. It, it's, it's, it's an abuse that builds up over time, right? And before you know it, <laughs> you have been made food for snakes. So my heart goes out to not only his wife, uh, all women and men who have found themselves in these situations. But there is freedom from it. The first thing we have to do is recognize the truth of God's word concerning such things. So I'm going to leave it right there. Um, I never wanted to, although my book starts off with um, explaining what narcissist is, and narcissism is, and Jezebel, because I, I believe they're two and the same, um, what it is. I never wanted to make my ministry about narcissism because <laughs> there's no way that that spirit, that kind, that, that, that abuse had taken so much out of me. You know, one day maybe I'll share you share with y'all some pictures before and after, right? Because at the end of my journey, I couldn't even recognize myself. I wasn't on drugs. I wasn't on anything, but you would have thought I was. <laughs> I didn't even recognize myself. And in all of that, I found my peace in God. So to take that away from the people who are struggling with it, we can't do that. To take that away from even the people who find themselves on the other side of this, meaning the actual abusers themselves, we can't take that away. The only thing is, are you yielded to it? Is it coming from you? Or do you have a sincere heart when you go to God? Or are you speaking with the tongues of men and angels? But have not 
love have not God. In the name of Jesus. I think that's enough right now. I will see you guys later. I hope this word found you in your perfect peace. Amen.